I talk about three pillars of, of um, AI in, in diagnostic radiology. Um, on the one hand, you have um, lesion identification or, or notification, right? Picking up an abnormality. Um, the second part of that is um, your work list prioritization, right? Being able to prioritize interpretation of these studies that have positive findings. And then the third part being um, care team notification. So um, getting uh, the right information to, to Dr. Masono uh, for a PE, for example, or getting that information um, to my cardiothoracic surgeons when there's a, a, a potentially surgical dissection. Um, and we, we kind of implemented those programs piecemeal, um, first with uh, PE response team, uh, and then subsequently with our or cardiovascular or cardiothoracic surgeons. Um, but, um, you know, it, it was it was very easy to get the buy-in because the technology is so good. Um, and the the benefits are are, are clear, as, as Dr. Masono pointed out. Um, it, any opportunity to, to sort of shortcut um, getting the patient uh, the optimal care um, is, is, is welcomed. Uh, with massive PE, of course, and, and with um, acute uh, aorta as well, um, you know, minutes matter and, and getting that information to the right person um, in an easily digestible manner um, is, is crucial. And, and so I didn't really have any trouble getting the buy-in. Um, it, it sold itself, so to speak. It became evident fairly early on that this this technology has staying power. Um, and so I had to pivot and find out, you know, again, how am I going to fund this going forward? Um, and I had to create that narrative uh, with the hospital. Um, and as I mentioned before, and as you're well aware, there's no direct reimbursement for AI um, in diagnostic radiology. So you have to look at what what's the value add, um, you know, as, as my uh, CFO says, you know, ROI, show me the ROI. Um, and so uh, I did put together um, sort of the story with real world uh, examples um, and using our own data um, where there is potential um, money savings uh, to the hospital from this technology, right? So. Um, for example, um, extrapolating uh, data from, from work done at, at, at Yale and Cedars and, and other big institutions, we can um, you know, work backwards and, and apply that, uh, some of that data to uh, our own numbers and figure out, are we able to decrease um, length of stay, for example? Um, are we able to um, uh, manage patients uh, quicker uh, and, and um, more effectively for intracranial hemorrhage, uh, for example? If we get those patients admitted in, in the appropriate care, um, overall decreasing that length of stay. Um, uh, more straightforward things like uh, simply not missing um, important findings, right? That, that may uh, lend themselves to a medical legal situation uh, down the line. Um, there's a whole host of, of ways you can you can um, create that that narrative of of saving money and at the same time providing good patient care, right? I mean, obviously, patient care is at the center of the picture, but at the same time, if you can um, talk about the the return on investment um, and uh, explain that to the hospital um, effectively you know, the, the buy-in is, is, is fairly easy from there. You know, we supplied the, our, our data as far as um, imaging numbers uh, and things go. Um, and uh, your team was uh, incredibly helpful in, in um, crunching those numbers and, and really, you know, putting, putting a dollar sign on, on some of these um, uh, things to make them more tangible, um, so to speak. So, um, uh, AI Doc supplied me with a, a whole host of, of slides, which I then, um, you know, personalized to our to our story, um, and then um, presented it to the C-suite at the hospital um, to, to to get their buy-in going forward. So um, it was it was effective. Um, we were able to uh, expand our program um, significantly from the number of modules we went live with initially. Um, and um, we're now, I think, at 15 or so modules with two more to go and, 
and um, looking at uh, implementing our um, follow-up manager program uh, in the coming months. So um, all very exciting stuff. IR and in radiology, I mean, there's there's a lot of technology, there's a lot of innovation, there's new stuff every day, right? I mean, it's just, it's that's what we all are, defines who we are as physicians. Um, but it's rare that an innovation comes along where if you took it away, the doctors would revolt. Um, and <laughs> I shudder to think about what would have happened if Scott hadn't secured that funding for us to continue to have ADOC, but that is the sign of a technology that has uh, arrived, not only just arrived, but really become fully integrated um, into what we do for a living. Um, and so I just wanted to say, I mean, that that is a, a, all those ROI, all those financial numbers. I'm an MBA, I love those too. But sometimes you got to look at that doctor revolution index, right? If you take it away, they're going to revolt. Well, you probably should, you know, you probably should make sure you can fund that in, in places that don't have the tech might need to consider getting it.